Yo, what's up fam and welcome to my channel. I hope everybody's having a good week because I've been having an awesome week rebuilding my catalog. And as I'm rebuilding my catalog for all my beats, I decided that I would revisit some tech that I feel like I've abandoned uh, because it just didn't fit my workflow at the time. On top of the fact that I really couldn't get it to work at its full potential. So today we're gonna be talking about the Roly Blocks light pad and how I get mine to work inside of Beatmaker 3. Let's go. So if you're not familiar with what Roly blocks are, it's basically a set of modular synth controllers. It's a MIDI controller and they snap together using magnets and they can hook up to your devices and control your MIDI instruments via Bluetooth or you can hook them up through USB with the included USB type C uh, cable that comes with it. This is the main controller and it's called the light pad. It's about four inches and it's really light and compact. And this thing is really tiny, you guys. I carry this with me everywhere. It actually fits right into my pockets. So if you're in the market for a small compact MIDI controller that fits right into your pocket that you can take pretty much anywhere that also hooks up to your iPhone and your iPad, I would strongly suggest looking into the uh, Roly Blocks light pad. But today we're gonna start the conversation on your workflow with the iPad and your Roly Block system and how I get my light pad to work with Beatmaker 3. So this is not gonna be a full review on the light pad block. This is just more so the introductory to the workflow with Beatmaker 3 and how I get it to work. So the first thing you'll need is a desktop computer so that you can download and install the Roly Blocks dashboard so that you can get into the settings of the Roly Light Pad block and the whole blocks uh, system. From the dashboard, you can choose different settings and, and tweak all of your settings inside of your MIDI controller to best fit your needs. Next, you're gonna wanna grab the included uh, USB type C cord and plug it up and turn it on. After you have it powered on, you wanna plug your USB in into your laptop or your desktop. So once you've got it connected to your laptop or your desktop computer, you can see here that you have a bunch of different profiles and applications that you can load into your Roly Blocks light pad. So you have a profile for Ableton Live Control. You have uh, you have some games that you can play, but I never really use those. You also have the Drum Blocks preset. Uh, fader blocks control and each of these profiles actually control different um, functionalities of what your light pad will be able to do inside your DAW. You even have some compatibility with Logic and GarageBand. But like I said, you can set these presets to pretty much control any parameter inside your DAW. But the preset that we're looking for is the control grid. And this brings up some, some pads that we can go into the editor. Basically tweak every pad to do a different thing uh, depending on what, what our workflow is. So it controls it real time and updates it just like that. So now that we have our light pad set to the control grid preset, this is the most optimal preset that I found that works inside of Beatmaker 3. So let's go ahead and jump over to the iPad and let me show you how I set that up. All right, so once we have this all set up, we can go ahead and program our light pad into Beatmaker 3. So I already have a session opened up. So what we're gonna do is go into our MIDI settings, go into audio and MIDI devices, and hit this Bluetooth button over here. And when your light pad is turned on, you'll see your light pad available in your um, Bluetooth MIDI devices. So go ahead and click, go ahead and tap on the light pad block and it should say connected. Now that we are connected, we're going to go ahead and go to MIDI focus actions. And here you'll see a list of your controls all the way down to your macro controls everything's here so what we're going to do is uh go ahead and tap so that you can learn which midi note does what and you're going to do this for every single pad map pad three to pad three on your midi controller map pad four so on and so forth so once you've assigned all your pads to every corresponding pad number you're going to go ahead and test them out. So here you can see that I loaded up a base patch and inside this base patch only one pad exists. So what we'll have to do from here is go to keys. Mm -hmm. 
now I can play every key that's listed here on all my pads. <laughs> So that's pretty much how you map your light pad to the pads in Beatmaker 3. If you guys want me to go into more detail about how to start making beats, actually making beats inside of Beatmaker 3 with the light pad, let me know in the comments and then maybe I'll make this a series. Hopefully I was able to give you guys some insight on how that works and maybe you can start working on your practices and processes for making beats inside of Beatmaker 3 with the light pad. If you don't have one, don't even worry about it fam. And I'll put a link to the products that I talked about here in the description below. It also comes with, with its own free app and I talked about that in this video here. Maybe it's over here, here, I don't know. But I talked about that. <laughs> But I talked about that in, in another video, so you can go ahead and check that out and see how it will work in your workflow. If this was helpful to you, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll be here every week giving you tips and tricks on how to improve your workflow, whether it be through tech, gadgets, or some software that I might run across. Thanks again for rocking with the channel. Thanks for rocking with me. This has been Brandon Rico with another Beatmaker 3 tutorial. And remember, if I can create like this, you can create like this. Peace out.